Hello, David. Do we have you uh, on the line? Who are you looking for right now? Hello, David. Uh, we finished our last session slightly early. Uh, so we will be ready whenever you are for our next uh, workshop. Um, yep, I'm ready. Awesome. How are you doing, David? So good. So glad to be here. Awesome. Uh, Let's pull up the presentation. Yeah, feel free to, to share your screen and uh, get going whenever you're ready. But just as a quick intro, uh, David uh, is the founder of uh, Lit, and today he's going to be giving a workshop on decentralized cryptography, access control, and programmatic signing. Uh, so whenever uh, David is ready, I will hand the uh, mic over to him uh, to get us going. Excellent. Can you see my screen all right? Yep, looks great. Awesome. Hello, everybody. Uh, so glad to be here. My name is David, and today we're going to talk about, yes, decentralized cryptography. And so uh, this will take a couple minutes. Well, there'll be a little bit of a preamble about where we're at in Web3, and then we'll dive into some of the specifics of, of Lit. Um, so one of the things that we like to think about over here at Lit before we dive into the specifics is that we have this metaphor where Web3 is kind of like email, meaning that what we're dealing with here is a, a new system whereby it doesn't really matter what application you use because we're all using the same underlying protocols in the same way that uh, somebody may use Gmail, somebody else may use Microsoft Office, somebody else use ProtonMail, but they can all message each other because of the underlying protocol. And this is the same mental model that applies to Web3 with the, the shared use of decentralized protocols. And of course, in Web2, we're interacting with platforms, and then those platforms are trading finances and information about us and in the whole ad tech industry. Um, but in Web3, we have the notion of public and private keys, also called as an asymmetric key pair, also called a wallet. And so what do um, key pairs do? And if this is a review for you, um, sorry about that, but the core thing that a key pair does is it can do encryption and signing. Functionally, the ability to read private data and sign data uh, where you can cryptographically prove that it has come from one party. So this is things like signing a transaction that then pushes it to a blockchain. And so what this means is in the context of Web3, the key is the method for interacting with these decentralized networks, whether they're video storage and encoding networks, blockchains, whatever it might be. And so with that preamble, that leads me to what we're doing at Lit, which is we have built a decentralized programmable key whereby there is a key stored in distributed custody, um, uh, which is to say that none of these individual nodes have the whole key. Um, this is a methodology for having a distributed custody key. And what we have done at Lit is made that distributed custody key programmable with the same functionality that we discussed before, which is reading and, and write access. And so um, on the read side, we think about this as like access control, who can see what, who can read what. Um, and so these hexagons here represent the lit nodes. And uh, the way that this network works is that uh, you can have some gated content, be it video content, images, text, uh, chat, and functionally set up a rule that says, um, somebody must have some asset in their wallet or some condition on the blockchain must be true in order for that individual user to see, decrypt, and use that content. And so the way that it works is that each individual node checks against the blockchain. Does this user have this NFT? And if yes, each individual node generates an authorization and sends it down to the user. So let's say you have a creator who's put a video up 
and has gated it. And that video is hosted via live here. And one of those creators fans either follows that person on Lens Protocol or owns their NFT. Lit is a mechanism for validating that they have that asset and provisioning them the access, which is this decentralized access control piece. And again, kind of the, the, the core idea to, to take away is that there's no central key master using this uh, technology called threshold cryptography. And so there's a number of use cases for this, whether it's token gated chat, uh, things around intellectual property like videos, um, or even just being able to reimagine the notion of authorization and sign-in. So I'm sure all of you are familiar with the notion of sign-in with Google, where you go to a website and uh, the website says, hey, we would like access to your contacts and calendar. And you consent to that and you say, oh, sure, I would like to give this website my contacts and calendar. And in that case, you're telling Google and then Google is sending that information over to the site. But in this example, it becomes more of a one-to-one uh, -one relationship between the user and that application when the user themselves can grant consent or selective disclosure rights to that given um, application. The other aspect of a key and the other aspect of lit, of course, is the ability to, to sign. Uh, so this same decentralized and distributed and fault tolerant key network in addition to provisioning the ability to read or view data, can also programmatically sign data. And so the way that the signing works, and again, the core idea here is a key can do two things, read, write, encrypt, sign, lit as a decentralized key network has that same underlying capacity. And so the way that this works is that developers can um, write programs and upload them to the decentralized web. And the nodes can be triggered to say, hey, I want this distributed custody key that represents some, some of my users to sign this transaction, to sign this verifiable credential. And the thing that is signed, whether it's a transaction, a verifiable credential, triggering a smart contract to run, uh, can be programmatic and triggered. And only the authorized data to be signed um, is signed based again on this distributed custody key. And so in this case, the nodes read the program, which is stored on decentralized storage in an immutable content ID. And instead of generating an authorization to read or decrypt, they generate an authorization to sign some data and once again, in that same threshold cryptography type of way, the nodes uh, send those authorizations down to a user or some agent who collects those shares and then can push that transaction to chain. And so this notion of programmatic signing is, is broadly applicable. Um, you can use it for DeFi automation. For example, let's say you have some staked tokens and uh, the current state of the art when you have staked tokens is you sign up for some alerting service on your cell phone that texts you when the price of those tokens start to drop. But in this context of programmatic signing, if when, when leveraging lit and threshold cryptography, one could write a program that says, if you see the price of these staked tokens start to drop more than 20% in a two hour period or some other rule around stop loss, those Tokens could be unstaked, sold for USDC on a DEX, and sent to the user's ledger. Functionally, what we're talking about here is basically something similar to Amazon Lambda functions or serverless functions, plus a key management system, um, but not centralized with fault-tolerant distributed custody. Uh, there's also some really other interesting use cases around leveraging this programmatic signing for mobile apps and mobile games, and also just doing private key abstraction and improving the wallet experience for end users because the key is custodied in the network rather than on the device, a user could set up their phone as the authorized party to sign, go ahead and chuck their phone in the ocean because the device key or the Apple key is the authorized party, go to the iPhone store, 
buy a new phone, sign from like authorize the signing from their new phone, and um, and and not have that kind of burden of uh, being locked into their phone being the uh, final source of truth for their funds or for their data without also having to trust a centralized custodian using this 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 notion of uh, threshold cryptography. And so I'll pass it off to Debbie to talk a little bit about the prices. Sweet. Thank you, David. Um, and then I'll start sharing my screen since I have a bit of content for y'all. Okay. So we have $4,000 in prizes, um, $2,000 for best use case for access control. So we're really looking for unique cases of for permission to access. And then our second prize is $2,000 for best use case for lit actions, which we really want to see novel ap applications that utilize lit's programmable key pairs and our lit actions to introduce, as David was saying, automation and interoperability to the de decentralized web. So diving in, Ox Control is on lit on the lit network, sorry, let me catch my breath for a second. Um, on the lit network is um, what a user might give might give access for a user to decrypt something or for lit to send down a signature. So what is an on-chain condition? On-chain conditions could be a user is a member of a DAO. We have examples out there, token gating a web page based on someone being part of developer DAO, for example or user holds an NFT in a collection, or user holds at least one ETH, and that could even be one ETH or 0.1 ETH and 0.1 Solana, and as well as a user holds a specific wallet address. And all these conditions, you can use Boolean operations, so they can be AND or ORD, so that you can really build in cross-chain on the chains that we support. Um, really interesting use cases of how do you create cool communities based on different NFT collections within, let's say, the Ethereum ecosystem and the Solana ecosystem. Um, so one example of how you can use our access control is through authentication for dynamic content through JSON web tokens. So an example of that is token gating streams, which is really interesting in context of live peer with live streaming and um, streaming data. And so an example of that that we have out is our co-founder CTO, Chris, created a NFT in which in owning this Tesla NFT, you could be able to control his car. And so using Cloudflare, the Tesla API and Lit that, um, Going through that, um, he created a website where if you owned his NFT, you could go to his site and then request access to say, hey, I have this NFT. Now, what can I do with Tesla or with Chris's Tesla? And so how that information flow goes down is you're requesting access to that lit locked page. That lit locked page might give will give you access to driving the car, unlocking the car. So on the lit protocol side, we call the lit nodes to get that JSON web token um, to, and we're checking like, is this person, person authorized? If they are, send back that token. And so let's say that we are. So that signed JWT token gets passed back down. And then in this case, we're also using a Cloudflare worker to talk to the Tesla API. And so we have that signed JWT and then we're like, we're like, yes, it's verified. Let's go, let's unlock Chris's car and be able to drive it. So that's one way that you can use lit for token gating stream, streamed information. And then the next example might be for blocking static content via encryption. So that might look like static content can be uh, strings, it can be 
images videos. And so I'm gonna go through an example with y'all as well as a little bit of code of encrypting and decrypting um, on-chain metadata. So this is the example um, and let's just go through the flow before I go through that code with y'all. So here um, we have these NFTs that have some um, metadata. And here I'm gonna decrypt by connecting my wallet. And in this case, the conditions for seeing this information are to have at least 0.1 Matic. And here in my wallet, I have 0.2 Matic. So let's sign this transaction. And so in this image, this metadata says, I am Tony. And let's hop in to what that code looks like. So in this case, there's a little bit of setup. So I'm gonna go through first the lit specific code in which we're setting that access control condition where this is the typical schema of access control, control condition where we're setting um, the chain, which here is Mumbai, as well as the method, which is ETH get balance. And the parameters are checking this user's wallet balance saying that they have at least 0.1 Matic. And so there's some functions here too, calling the lit JS SDK where we're encrypting that text and we're passing that to the lit node saying like, here are the access control conditions. Um, here's the authorization signature. Let's get back that encrypted string to be able to send that to our smart contract when we are creating that NFT. And then on that other side, where when we are reading the NFT, that information on chain is decrypted. So when we're pulling that out, being able to pass that back to it saying like here, is that symmetric key we've generated here at the access control conditions? Um, let's check if this person has the correct access to be able to see. And so let me go back to my presentation. Um, so to make it easier for y'all to build, we have two tools. One is a share model in which if you're creating an application that allows someone to set access control conditions, you can easily use this within your application to allow someone to set like, hey, I want to gate access on Ethereum or Solana. I want to gate based on an NFT based on, let's say, DAO members, POP um, collections. And this share modal will give you the correct access control schema, as well as those conditions that someone has set. And then if you're writing your own access control conditions, um, oh, oh my. please go to the access control debugger where you're able to put in your schema and be able to check that that's a valid schema within our own system. So going on, um, I'm gonna talk a little bit about our programmatic cloud keys. Um, and as David has mentioned um, about some of the things that are really interesting to build with our programmable cloud keys and lit actions. One of which is on infrastructure where you can build really cool infrastructure like oracles for off-chain data, event listening and condition-based execution. Um, and then privacy preserving transactions as well as decentralized key custodians. And then on the Web3 side, um, some interesting applications that we've thought of on the social side is credentialing systems for, for privacy preserving Web3 login, user owned social graphs. So that might look like, what is it? How do you interact with, let's say on Lens, with Lens's social graph? And how do you build that out with live peer doing live streaming on these social networks? And other things that we thought, thought about as well as account abstraction with support for web two auth methods and decentralized chatbots. So let's say someone here is thinking of building a Twitch or something else with live streaming, as well as there's chat on the side. What can you do with lit actions on that 
And the last thing is verifiable on-chain reputation. So taking on-chain information and running these smart contracts that we have with our um, programmable key pairs and lit actions to say like, to get some information with signing and then um, being able to give access to additional information based on on-chain reputation. So I'm gonna walk you all through an example of lit actions with the weather API. So in this case, why this is, why this is interesting is, let's say you want um, signed information from a trusted source. So being able to write a JavaScript smart co contract function and saying like, oh, I trust the weather API. And when I get information from that endpoint, I want it to be signed knowing that it is from that endpoint. And um, the value of having these trusted networks kind of compounds as, you're, as we're building out these systems. So I'm gonna go into the code with y'all here. Um, what actions? So I'm gonna do first the reverse of that previous example where I'm gonna actually go through that code first and then we'll go through what the flow will be. And so some things to note about working with our programmable key pairs and lit actions is we're currently in testnet. So um, I'm gonna go down a little bit here where there's this public key. So feel free to use this public key when you're building out your programmable key pairs and lit actions. This is on our testnet. And so be aware that um, the testnet may change over time. So any sensitive information, any of that, anything of that sort. So um, we're actively developing and be sure to um, keep updated with us on our Discord if you have any questions as well. So in this case, I'm gonna first go through this action code where we are writing this JavaScript code to read or get a request from that weather API response, passing in, let's say we're asking for today's weather. So date and time for that weather. And then the lit nodes will send back that signed data saying like here, this is from the weather API response and a signature, not actual data and the signature. And so I wanna give y'all a look at what that format is. So it's just standard JavaScript within this kind of schema of putting that in that variable lit action code, and then later passing in into this, our lit node client and calling execute JS, where that will call our lit nodes to be able to execute your action code and then send back that signature where we have that response, and that response, that sign response with the temperature and our short forecast. So going into it, what that flow might look like is, let's say I just want today's weather and I'm gonna run that lit action. So today it's 49 degrees Fahrenheit and mostly sunny. And we just ran that um, lit action and got that response from the weather API. So closing out, close to closing out, here are some ideas of what to build, um, something that we're thinking about with account abstraction with Web2 or Apple Passkey auth. So bridge, really bridging Web2 ways of authentication with these Web3 paradigms of decentralized applications, um, certification applications, Web3 login with private data, user-owned social graphs, and then ecosystem tools like event listeners to power automation. So um, what so listeners to for event-based triggers that might be um, let's see. And then so execution SEs for various platforms, as I said before, decentralized chatbots, 
And then lastly, more in the great game realm, NPCs for decentralized games. So how do you have these auto auto generated actions that you know that someone's going to keep on going through and being able to respond to that. Um, thank you so much. Um, I guess this is where we'll open it to questions. Thank you, David, and thank you, Debbie, for the really, really uh, interesting presentation. Uh, and we will open the floor up to questions now. Feel free to write them in the chat or uh, unmute yourself and ask live. But just while people are formulating their questions, uh, I can ask one. Um, and it would be, uh, what are your top tips uh, on using uh, Lit uh, for the first time? Yeah, I posted a, a couple of guides um, into, and you can find these on, on the docs as well, on how to use various storage networks. Um, and so this is a pretty, a pretty powerful protocol as we've covered with both the capacity for encryption and signing. And so I think the, the main thing to do, of course, is to decide what you want to do. Do you want to gate information or do you want to do programmatic signing depending on, um, on what your use case is? And so if it's encryption, um, there is the capacity, or I, I would say checking out some of those guides. Um, and uh, th th those are kind of like single serving methodologies on how to do one specific thing is, is the right way to dive in. Um, Debbie, anything you'd add for somebody who's just encountering these docs for the first time? Yeah, um, our docs, we've been improving our docs over the past couple of months. And so I think we have um, really good ways of going from zero to one or beginner, intermediate, advanced on what you're looking for within Lit. So that earlier example of like encrypting, a very simple example of encrypting a file, encrypting static data, going to some of the more example, advanced examples of encrypting on-chain metadata. Um, so I would say really go to the docs and be able to look through those, through those resources. We also have a lot of links out to our GitHub, which will have a lot more code examples. And then we have a whole list of prior projects that have integrated Lit too. And so being able to go through um, code that's in production. Awesome. Thank you very much uh, for your answers, guys. Uh, we have uh, a last chance for questions, uh, guys. I don't see any more in the chat. Uh, so we'll give you another, another few seconds to drop any more questions. If not, I think we will wrap things up uh, early. Uh, but just a quick reminder that if you have questions later on, uh, feel free to drop them in the Discord and we'll be offering uh, uh, technical support. Uh, so, yeah, and feel free again to book a one-to-one -one call with me uh, and I can uh, try and help out as best as I can. I uh, just wanted to say a, a big thank you to our, our speakers today, David and Debbie. Uh, we really appreciate you coming in and we hope that uh, lots of people have been inspired to uh, build with your technology. Um, I think we will wrap things up there, guys. Uh, so it's slightly early. Uh, everyone have a great uh, evening and we will have more uh, workshops as part of the next video build uh, over this week and next week as well. Uh, so uh, goodbye, everyone. Bye.